Hey guys, Minotone here. Today we will be talking about Midrange Paladin. So, the deck has seen a lot of variation through time, um, and I feel like with the inclusion of um, a card from Knights of the Frozen Throne to Paladin's Pool, um, they were really close to a strong list. I feel now they've gotten a few final pieces, and we're seeing a strong list form here, a really strong one. Um, whether it's going to be one of the best decks, I don't know, but I think it'll definitely stand its ground. I'm not saying that there are no other strong Paladin decks, um, because um, there's a deck Recruit Paladin or something, which is actually really powerful it seems. Oh, it, it has the potential to be very powerful. It's been performing well until now. Um, but I will be showing this because I have a lot of faith in it, and I think it's quite cool. Um, yes, so let's get into the cards. First up, we've got um, Righteous Protector. So, Righteous Protector is this little one drop that just helps you to survive. I think that's really important because a lot of times this deck doesn't get a lot of tempo going, but Righteous Protector just kind of helps you out with that by um, not only in the early game being a fairly good body, but he also kind of blocks things in the late game. So, when there are no 1 1s left or no pings left, he's actually going to eat up like just more damage because he's, well, going to take two attacks to get through anyways. Um, yeah, so that seems fairly powerful. Um, I think he's just a really good card, um, and it's it's really just a defensive one. It also has synergy with Corpse Take, which we're going to be talking about later. Um, now we're playing Equality. So, um, the deck's a little bit segmented into different packages that kind of do different things, but together they kind of form the deck as a whole. Equality is part of the Clear Package, and the Clear Package is sort of there to prevent aggro decks from completely running you over. So. Um, there are two combos in the deck, Equality Consecration and Equality Pyromancer, and Pyromancer and, and Consecration are both in the deck. Um, so they both clear the board. Consecration clears the enemy, bo the enemy board, and Pyromancer clears the entire board um, with Equality. So it's just in there to like combo with these, because those clears are really, really powerful. Um, and often, you can use it to just set everything to one health um, and then trade, if sometimes that's going to be advantageous. But a lot of times you're going to be comboing the cards. <coughs> then we've got Hydrologist. So Hydrologist is in the deck because there are no terribly good two drops, and we really want Wild Pyromancer in the deck, um, which next card up. Um, but there, so we can't run Kaleseth, um, and of course we have Equality too, which was another two cost card. So we're running Hydrologist. And Hydrologist is fairly good. Um, it's not really the big body, but the secrets are actually kind of nice a lot of times. It's just utility, and you can kind of use it um, to outplay your opponent, even though the secrets Paladin have are not that... Um, they're not crazy, right? But they have a little bit of variance to them, so you can do some tricky things. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's just there to be played on turn 2, and it's kind of useful at other points of the game. Um, no, nothing special really. Then we've got Wild Pyromancer. So this combos with equality for clearing the entire board because while well, everything's set to one, then Pyromancer triggers and kills everything. <coughs> That's all it's in there for. Oftentimes you're not going to be playing this on turn two just because you're going to hold on to it um, for the combo. But sometimes you can just play it as a minion if you know your opponent's never going to build up a board that you want to clear, or if you just have to be aggressive. Yeah, that's pretty much what it's in there for. It's a pretty nice stat line, too, um, for two mana. So, we're not unhappy about that. Then we've got Elder Peacekeeper. So, this guy is in here because if we're playing against a deck which plays really large minions, we don't actually have any other answer to these than playing Equality and a Clear or using Terran. We'll, we'll get to him later. But Eldor is like, it's a fair minion. It's 3-3 three, three for 3, which is good. And then it also. Um, if the enemy has big minion, you just render that useless, or not completely useless, but close to useless. And that's really important, um, just because that gets you a lot more time, you can get a draw into your clears, so you can clear the board when there's a big board, instead of just clearing one minion. Um, so in general, it just gets you a little bit more space, and you can use it to make good trades too. That's fairly good. Then we've got Rallying Blade, which is, um, it combos nicely with the other Divine Shields we have, we have a few. Um, and then it's just really nice for killing minions. And I feel like this deck, sometimes you're just going to win the game by hitting every single weapon in the deck into the enemy's face, because that's actually a lot of damage. Um, 
but I feel like it's often just going to be used to clear enemy minions. That's like the common use of it. And if you can get to buff anything, just even one target, that's usually pretty good. You're not going to be buffing like lots of divine shield minions. That's pretty unrealistic. Um, even though that can be very good if you can do it. It's just, it's not that common. When we're playing Wicker Flame Burn Bristle. So this card, um, you could argue that it has a little bit weak stats. Um, and 2-2 two, two with divine shield and taunt. Eh, is it that good? Um, but I'd say it is, because against aggro decks, it's going to be super strong. It's often going to eat up two attacks, getting you four health, um, and of course um, the damage that it took to kill it, which is also nice. So it's usually just a lot of health you gain um, from it. Also, it, it can be used to protect your other minions, which is pretty sweet. Um, and then it has some synergy with Corpse Taker, um, because it has all these abilities that Corpse Taker can sort of steal. We'll get to that. Um, yeah. Then we've got Consecration. So this is your primary clear. It's that if aggro decks play a lot of minions and you don't have any quality, this one can clear them anyways, and you can use it to push face damage, and it can do everything really. Um, so a, a little bit of everything. And that's just pretty nice. Um, yeah, it's, there's not much to say to it, I think. It's just a strong card. It's a strong card in its own respect, and therefore it's in there. Yeah, and we are playing Corpse Taker. So this is like one of the stars of the deck. It's going to steal all the divine. It's going to steal divine shield from cards in your deck. Wind Fury, Taunt, and Life Steal. So that's like one reason we have Wicked Flame, Burn Bristle, and the Righteous Protectors, and Try and such. Because this guy just goes really strong on turn four if you play him with all these buffs. So that's quite powerful. Um, we're also playing a single Wind Fury minion, um, which isn't that good, but it's good at Corpse Taker, so that's why we're having it. Um, yeah, but Corpse Taker is just a really strong card, both for like stopping the enemy and rushing you down because it actually heals you for a lot if it gets life steal, and then also for hitting the enemy because it's six damage each turn with Wind Fury, and that's quite a lot for a four drop. Yeah, but when we play True Silver Champion, this weapon's crazy because four damage um, to durability for four mana is good, um, and then you get a little bit healing on top of that. Um, yeah, so just a strong weapon in general. Um, yeah, it's going to kill a lot of things from aggro, and against the control, you can just use it to go face. That's not a bad thing. Um, then we're playing Bolvar. So I think Bolvar is one of these more replaceable legendaries, because, well, he's good, right? But he's, the best thing about him is that he fills, like, that 5-cost slot, which you don't really have a lot of good things to do. But Bolvar's, like, not that mentor. He's nice, though. He's He's pretty strong. So, if you can get him out and get some other Divine Shield popped while he's on the board, he's going to grow pretty large. That's nice, it's really good actually, but he's a little bit slow. Um, so you got to, like, pay attention to that. Yeah, and then we've got Cobalt Scalesbane. I think Cobalt Scalesbane is good, but it has a little bit um, less stickiness than Bolvar. But what it does is it really snowballs hard if you get it on the board and get ahead. Uh, also, if you do play Corpse Taker and play Cobalt Scalesbane, after that, and it buffs the Corpse Taker, the Corpse Taker just, like, doubles its damage. Um, and that's actually a pretty big doubling, because of the Wind Fury. <coughs> and you get to heal for a ton because of the life steal too. So that's really, really powerful. Um, and then, Scale Spade's just good when you can, like, populate the board all the time. Um, which you can with your Hero Power and all your different Divine Shield minions. That's pretty sweet. Um, I've got Spyro Steed. Um, this guy is in there for defense. It's really, really powerful. Um... You like put 12 health, essentially that the enemy has to go through, plus whatever the minion already had. So that's really a big wall um, if you can place it on turn 6. And oftentimes you're just going to play it and you get really good trades from it. So I feel like that's super powerful. But mainly that ability to just stop your opponent from being able to go face is like amazing. Um, yeah, so there isn't that much to say to it really, it's just really good. Um, yeah. Then we've got Terran. We've got Sign Keeper Terran. This is like a must have legendary in my opinion because he's so powerful. Against big minions, you could put an enemy big minions, you can make them small. Against, um, well, if you have a lot of small minions, you can make those big. He really is like, he has so many uses and the stat line's really good because after everything's made to 3 threes, um, he's a 3 7 which trades really well into that. Oftentimes you're going to get two, or maybe even three if you're lucky, um, out of him. So he's going to trade pretty favorably a lot of times. He's a little bit 
not that good against like heavy flood decks, but I feel like your board clear package you should just deal with the deals with these. Um, so he's more for those heavier decks. <coughs> but right there, I think he's really powerful. Yeah. Well, I'm playing Corridor Creeper. Um, so I believe this is like the new inclusion, right? It's the only new card in the deck, which is a little bit boring, I suppose. But it really just makes the deck. It's so important to it. Um, so what it does is that after you clear, usually you couldn't play the clear package in this deck because if you did, the deck became too slow and you get outlasted by heavier decks and you get outrushed by, I well, faster decks. At least that could happen. With this card, you instantly solve the problem of the deck being too slow. So what happens now is that if you clear the board, you can play these after that. And that's huge, because the board's going to be empty. You're going to have complete dominance over the board. Um, so that's really, really powerful. And you can just keep filling the board with your hero power, and that when they die, the hero power tokens, this one gets discounted. And in general, there's just a lot of ways to make it go discounted. And I feel like that's really powerful. Um, so the card's insane, and it's really the reason I'm featuring this deck. Because I think the deck is cool, um, and it definitely has some potential, but this one really pushes it to the top, I think. Um, like for a lot of other decks, but I feel like Corridor Creep really does a lot in this deck. Then we've got Stormwatcher. Um, so this is a Windshare minion um, that I talked about with Corpse Taker, and it's in there because there are no good Windshare minions. Like, this is the best one, and it's not that good. It's alright, you can push damage with it pretty fast, it deals 8 damage a turn, and it has a lot large health pool, that's good. That's why we have it. We Well, the other Wind Furies, I tried them, they're terrible. Uh, maybe Grok Fu Master's okay, but yeah, it's still not amazing. But Stormwatcher's decent, you could play that guy. Um, for all costs, you want to keep him in your deck. You don't want to draw Stormwatcher, because if you draw Stormwatcher, you don't get Wind Fury to your Corpse Takers, and that's what he's in there for. So, optimal... Um, in the optimal way, he stays in the bottom of your deck, um, at least until you've drawn both Corpse Takers and played them. Then you could consider to draw him, I suppose. Um, yeah, but there isn't much to it, he's just, yeah, he's just there. He's really good as Priest, actually, um, come to think of that, because I can't deal with him when he has 4 attack. Um, so he can be pretty scary there. Um, then we've got Trion. Um, for anybody who's played this game for long, um, they probably heard that Trion's the most broken legendary in the game. Um, and. Well, that's probably still true. He gets you so much value in one card, and it's just super insane. I think... I don't know a lot of decks that wouldn't play him if they had the chance to. And I think he's in virtually every Paladin, which isn't super aggro. Um, so, yeah. He's an amazing card. Um, what, what he's doing so good... What, what he does so well is that he's a big body when you play him. 6-6 um, six, six and Divine Shield and Taunt, pretty damn good. Then you get that weapon afterwards, which you, which you can either use to control the board really well, because it's a large weapon, or you can start swinging the face down. It's actually 15 damage over 3 turns, which is an enormous amount. Um, yeah, so now I've realized I did forget to mention a card, which is Chilbert Champion. Um, and of course, that actually seems like a pretty funny inclusion, I guess, because it's not that good of a card. Um, but with this deck, it actually becomes fairly good. I think it's a tech choice, though. Um, but the reason I'm running it is because if I'm seeing a lot of aggro, it helps me by healing me. And it's just another lifesteal card. Corpse Taker's not going to get lifesteal if you don't have any lifesteal cards in your deck. So if you draw Wicked of Flame Bread Bristle, which is the best lifesteal card we have, um, the Corpse Taker is going to be really bad from that point. So therefore, I feel like you get a lot more consistency from playing one more minion. And I don't feel like it's bad enough to not be able to that we cannot justify it. Um, so yeah, um, I think it probably deserves that inclusion. Um, so I know the deck seems a little bit boring, um, and I actually, I, I'm a little bit sad that it had to be this boring, but so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just talk about at least a few cards that could make the deck a little bit more flashy. Um, so, there's a few ways you can take this. First card up is Valinir, um, the new Paladin Legendary. I think that card's pretty damn good, um, and you could definitely make something out of it. I haven't really... I don't have the card, obviously, um, and 
I, I don't know how it would work, but I think there's potential, especially with those divine shields, the hand buff and the extra attack really goes powerful. So, I don't know if it would require a radical uh, rearrangement of the deck, but I could imagine something like cutting a rallying blade for it. It would make the deck a little bit more heavy, but I could see that as acceptable. Um, so that's one card I think would be pretty good. Um, it also helps you go face because it's another weapon. Then I think there's Happy Ghoul. Um, and Happy Ghoul is a really cool card because you have a lot of healing. And with all this healing, Happy Ghoul becomes really nice, cheap tempo that you can play. Um, so it's just you hit something with True Silver and play a 3 3 simultaneously. It's just really good to take back the board if you don't get in the early game. So I would probably cut Righteous Protectors to get it, um, because they serve the same function as like getting more tempo. But I think Righteous Protectors are pretty good for like um, early control and for consistency on Corpse Tanker. But I can't really decide which one is the best, and I think um, you pro I'm really going to be more happy about Happy Ghoul uh, with more healing in the deck. Um, but I feel like the deck wants to be a little bit aggressive, so you would have to turn it into some sort of um, like light control to make Happy Ghoul really shine. But you could do that. The deck has the potential. Um, it just requires that you rearrange it a little bit. Um, there's also the new Spellstone, which is going to work well off healing. And I feel like that could definitely also see play in this deck. Um, but the problem is you don't take enough damage. So somehow you need to take damage, but if you don't, that healing is not going to do anything. And it's not going to trigger the Spellstone or the Happy Ghoul. And that's really the big problem with that healing package. Um, but I could see the potential of it, and it seems really cool. There's also Black Guard, um, but I think that's a little bit more a niche card, and it's more for control. So there are some ways you can take it, and I feel like there might just be something um, among the new Paladin cards, like, like I mentioned Valadir, but also Bene Benevolent Jin. Any, um, I think that's what it's called. Um, those could be fine, just um, the Genie for anti aggro. But I don't really know. There are definitely a lot of ways to take the deck, and that's actually pretty good because it means you can adapt to the meta and you can sort of make the list that really suits you. Um, so I guess I could keep saying cards that I think might be good in the deck, but we should rather get into some gameplay. Okay, guys, we are back with the gameplay footage. Um, so we'll be going to a game, hopefully against Aggro. I feel like the deck performs a little bit better against Aggro compared to Control. But we'll see. I think it can handle control too. I'm going to be seeing Rogue. Rogue should be fairly good. And we're just going to stick with it, it seems. This is really good because Corridor Creep will get good discounted from the start, and we've got a fairly strong start here. Righteous Protector is just icing on the cake. Um, getting the star to be really powerful. So we're, we're going to anticipate that it is Tempo Row. I've seen a lot of that, so I think it's most likely going to be that. But it could be other things too. Fairly open to that. So since we don't know yet, I'm not going to be playing this guy. I feel like he's more useful against... Um, well, he's good against Tempo Rogue, but he's pretty good against Miracle Rogue too. So Nothing in particular um, that I prefer. I feel like we'll probably be owning, uh, be coining that Cold Taker, getting the pressure out there. It might just be removed, but we'll hope it doesn't. <coughs> so if he doesn't play minions, it's going to be hard to discount this. Backstab and eviscerate most likely. Oh yes. That's unfortunate, but Cordo Creep is playing around. Um, 
So, do we play or not? I feel like not. Um, I think we can probably get something better. So, looking at that, he's playing Cavern Shiny Finder. I think it's like Kingsbane Row. And I think Noble Sacrifice might be the best for that. The others didn't really make sense. Um, so, that's what we're picking. So, we expect these to trade all of them, which makes Cordo Creeper cost one, so it's going to be really easy to play next time. Now that's pretty annoying. We can go for the Pyromancer to over sacrifice and just get there anyways. Of course he's gonna play King's Bane. Like to play with fire? So we will go for this and actually get a fairly strong board out of it. Um, with King's Bane Rogue, I don't feel like it makes a lot of sense holding on to Pyromancer. It's okay, right? Because if they play a Felderai Strider and um, Giants, they could do that. Um, it's pretty good to just Pyromancy quality. But I don't feel like it's like this game that it's going to be imminently threatening. Okay, that's a pretty weak turn. So, we could either Rallying Blade or we could go Cobalt Scales Bane. I feel like Cobalt Scales is like really risky if he just uh, clears the board somehow. So I feel like we're not going to do that. We're just going to start hammering his face instead. If he does clear the board, we're going to hammer down Cobalt Scales Bane and Hero of Power. And we'll be fine anyways. Because I think the only way he clears this is either Vanish or... Um, so, yeah, it, it, it has to be Vanish or Blade Flurry. And I think Blade Flurry is pretty unlikely, even though I could imagine a rogue play. Oh, but it wasn't in there, um, certainly. So, um, we went pretty strong in this game with the Righteous Protector on one into the Hero Power into the Corpse Taker, and it just kind of worked out. Um, he never really got a start that's worth any that was worth anything. He just got rolled over. I feel like we showed some of the deck, but it wasn't like amazing. Um, so the deck, the deck definitely has a lot more potential. Um, but I want what I, I wanted to really show oh with this game I think is that um, the Pyromancer uh, had that really nice flexible approach where you can actually just play a secret with it and use it to clear something and the Corridor Creeper aim down for a lot of tempo um, and that kind of got us snowballing from there um, so yeah that was that was pretty good um, those are the games you want of course but might not not be those you get all the time Let's see. So it'll mage. There's been like different lists. This expansion for mage. Some focus on secrets, a secret mage. I showed that in my last video. Um, and some are more controlish based. Um, so it's pretty interesting to see what it is. Now I did mulligan for both corridor creepers. I'm not really sure that's correct. Maybe you should only mulligan for one when you're only ha when you're going first. I think you might only want to mulligan for one of them. But I feel like mulligan for two, mulliganing for two of them might be okay. Um, especially in matchups that don't involve a lot of spells, which is of course not this one, but what can you do? So that's not good, but it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. Mana Worm would have been a lot worse. <coughs> okay, so we're gonna trade. That's we lovely. Have many secrets. Oh, so he didn't play a secret. And that's kind of that's going to come back and bite him. Um, so we'll just clear that one away. Um, that's pretty sweet. We have many secrets. Oh gosh, he's being really serious about that. So now, guys, please notice what happens when I play this corpse tank. Um. So what she explodes trap? It's gonna kill the divine shield. Deal three damage to my face. The problem about Explosive Trap is that it looks at the health the minion has. It doesn't care about Divine Shield. So it deals um, zero damage to the Divine Shield and a lot to the face. So you just have to be wary of that. You can't negate the damage with the Divine, with the divine Shield. Um, but honestly it doesn't matter because we're just going to heal it right back up and play this lovely fella. So, the game is pretty much over right now. Um, 
we've stabilized. We've got a big board and we have lots of health. And we have another Koro Creeper going down. And total team. How lovely isn't that? But what will happen is that we don't like actually trading Creepers when we can just kill this. So now we're even further ahead. So that's a pretty good use of the spike rate steed, I'd say. We get some of his burn, that's lovely. We still have a good amount of pressure. Um, but yeah, not much to say about it. I think we're just gonna fire down that hydrologist to get some more pressure here. The getaway kill is still lovely. So now we're really putting that mid game pressure on. So I'm expecting to see Elunath, but I guess this'll do. Um, so yeah, I feel like that kind of showed um, the game pretty well. Um, yeah. And... Yeah, it was, the game was pretty quick and pretty dominating, but I hope you guys... Um, saw something about it anyways. It's really, I hope you saw the power of the Corpse Taker, because it was really doing a lot in this game, I feel like. Um, and well, yeah, just the general interplay. So, with that, um, I'll leave you guys to experiment with the deck. I think there's a lot of potential, um, and I hope you'll find some of it, and I hope to see you in my next video.